let's move 3,000 miles to the west. And I think there's no game in the NFL that I think of when I think, man, it's a long season, more than this game. And let me explain why. I think in the course of a season, you look at the calendar and it's, you know, from the start of the season to the end, it's only five months. It's shorter season than baseball, basketball, hockey. But those five months, they can each have about four seasons <laughs> in them. Because I, I think, I mean, let's 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 look at this. Let's look at this. The Detroit Lions, they start off really emotional big win at Kansas City. They're mostly good during the course of the year. But holy cow, did they get their rear ends handed to them when they played in Baltimore? Yeah. And, you know, they had ups, they had downs, they have the the Dallas game and all that. But now they're in the postseason and they have had two emotionally charged, uplifting games. They've scored 55 points uh, against two good teams and they come in and I think they're going to come in and play well. On the other hand, the 49ers. I mean, the 49ers, after five weeks, I, they beat the Cowboys 42 to 10. And I said, man, this is the best team in football. I don't know that it's close. And then they go on a three-game losing streak. Brock Purdy starts to be a little shaky. as a bad end in the loss at Minnesota. <clears throat> so, you know, you're a little bit shaky. On it. But then they start winning again. But at the end of the year... Baltimore just hands them their lunch. And then Brock Purdy doesn't play very well in the playoff game, uh, you know, in the divisional round. So uh, both of these teams have had three or four seasons kind of jammed into one. And 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 I think I think the 49ers are going to play well in this game, but you have to think that Kyle Shanahan has started to think, you know, I wonder if the bloom is coming off the rose a little bit with, with Brock Purdy. And I still think that Brock Purdy is really good and he's going to be a good quarterback for this team. But he simply has to play a little better and he can't be missing some of the throws uh, that he's missed going back to the Baltimore game and obviously against Green Bay. I think one of the things that Kyle Shanahan's got to do as a play caller is just get Brock Purdy very comfortable early. And, uh, you know, we talk about getting guys involved in the game plan, kind of uh, like a receiver, for instance, right? You, know, you want to get them some early touches so that they just get in rhythm and they get their mind in it and all this stuff. I mean, I, I think I would want to do that with Brock Purdy. You know, I think he's shown that he is still a young quarterback. I think he has played at a very high level in an offense that can make it easier for quarterbacks. But look, last week was not good aside from that last drive. Just wasn't, right? And, and the earlier touchdown to Kittle. You have to be more consistent. And I guess one way to do that is to give Brock Purdy just some of those early easy reads easy throws get them in rhythm you know don't have him drop back too far and have to look down just like just drop back and get the ball out of his hand and then as you go on in the game maybe it gets more comfortable and he can start making some better off schedule plays as we've seen him be able to do or take some of those deep shots but it's not going to be easy because this is a Detroit defense where at the number the raw numbers may not show it but they match up very, very well. And I think what they did to the Rams in the red zone, especially in that opening round of the playoffs this season, tells you a lot about what they can do defensively. So, yeah, this is a really interesting matchup. And Brock Purdy is going to need to play really, really well for Detroit to win. Excuse me. Goodness gracious. If he plays really, really well, Detroit's going to lose. If he plays really, yeah. really well, San Francisco is going to have that good shot to win. So I'll give you my one other factor in this game. And the other, the other factor that I think is significant in this game is that if you look at Jared Goff and his career against the 49ers, so Jared Goff has played eight playoff games, has not faced the 49ers uh, 
in a single one yet. But the 49ers over time have really gotten to know Jared Goff well. Now, obviously, 21, 22, and 23, uh, Jared Goff has been uh, in another division with Detroit, so they don't see him twice a year. However, you know, as you look at both of these teams and their history together, he's only played the 49ers one time since he was since he's been in Detroit. And bizarrely, that's his first game as a member of the Lions. Uh, Detroit played San Francisco at Ford Field opening week in 2021. The Niners won the game, but Goff had a prolific game. He threw the ball 57 times. But before then, before then, he had some rough days against uh, against the 49ers. And the 49ers, now Steve Wilkes obviously wasn't there as the coordinator, but he's thrown some picks. He's had some okay games, and he's had some games where he has really, really struggled. And I think probably some games that convinced uh, Sean McVay maybe we should uh, get rid of him. And in fact, he lost. Uh, when you look at the Rams 49ers matchups, he lost his last four games as a Rams quarterback to the 49ers. So they know him very, very well. And I think for guys like Dre Greenlaw, for Fred Warner, uh, for Nick Bosa, they have seen this movie before. They understand how to play him. I think that could be a bit of a hidden edge in this game. You think it matters? I, I do think it matters, Peter. And, you know, when you're a head coach and you've gone against somebody in your division for as long as Kyle Shanahan did with Jared Goff, it certainly makes a difference because you understand the kinds of throws that he can make and the kinds of throws he likes to make and, you know, where his eyes might start to drift in certain situations. I, I think that that is kind of a big deal. I mean, it's interesting. You know, the, the Rams generally had not beaten the 49ers in the regular season from uh, the end of to the 2018 season until just the end of this season when Carson Wentz actually started the game and ended up winning yeah. and getting the Rams that six seed. So the Rams in general have not had much success against San Francisco over the last few years, aside from that 21 uh, NFC championship game. But looking at this now, I think that be not just it's not just them that know Goff, right? Goff understands the principles and the general idea of what San Francisco wants to do as a defense under head coach Kyle Shanahan. Now, again, you know, Steve Wilkes is not the same as a uh, D'Amico Ryan's or um as uh uh the Robert Sala, who's now obviously the Jets head coach. So there are some differences there, but you still got four down linemen, you know, you still got a lot of the same personnel that he's familiar with. So there are things there where maybe the edge cancels itself out, but I, I do think that that familiarity between the quarterback and the opposing team does matter. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And I think one of the other things that I think on the one hand, the experience against him is one thing, but I think on the other hand, Jared Goff has shown the last two weeks that let's not try to write his story based on what happened three and four and five years ago. Yeah. He true. has been incredibly impressive in huge moments, especially against Matthew Stafford. What, what must that have felt like? And obviously, you know, against the Bucks, putting up 31 points. So that to me is, is a really, really interesting uh, game. And it's, it, it's going to, I think both of these games come down to the two minute warning. I don't think either one, uh, I, I don't think either one is going to be one of those that I look at to say uh, this can be 38 to 19. I think they're both really close. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.